In this video, we're going to look at three different approaches for modeling both staffing and salaries in a financial model. The first approach is what I call uh, named hires, and it is where you have specific line of sight into a particular employee that you're going to hire or they've already been hired. So here, uh, this is an account executive driven sales model that we're working in currently. So we're going to hire a couple of account executives to start off to generate revenue. We'll give these guys $100,000 um, of salary, so Sam Schiller and Jeremy Jones, uh, also in the sales and marketing department and also an account, a mid-market account executive. Our first employee is getting us to around 175 k of um, uh, uh, revenue. And then the second one will boost that up. It'll double it to about, around 350 now where we're at. Um, we can also just copy his salary. And we will continue to do this for other employees in the company. I have a schedule of other employees, so we can just copy and paste these in here from Excel. And um, so now we'll have their first uh, 10 employees in our company here. And uh, um, uh, and then we can put their salaries in. So this is all pretty straightforward. Um, and this is, again, best for employees who you have a specific line of sight into hiring. As we look at our uh, 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 graph of our headcount over here, you'll see, um, uh, uh, and let me also enter in the hire dates to make this a little bit more realistic. So they're not all starting on the same date over here. So with this, you'll see now we've staggered their hiring dates. Now let's go over and look at the second approach, second and third approaches to, um, to, to forecasting both salary and, uh, and headcount levels. So here we're in our general and trigger hire sheet. And uh, the first thing we can do is what I call general hires. So let's say that we have a project uh, an engineering project coming up and it's going to start in July and we're going to have to hire one um, uh, uh, R&D manager or um, engineer manager and four engineers to, uh, to execute on this. So this will um, uh, add employees here in our R&D group um, for July. Just did that. I think another good way to visualize this would be like with a bar chart and a, a stacked bar chart. Um, so that just grew our um, uh, roster of engineers. And then um, maybe similarly, we want to generate um, more revenue. So let's go and look at, um, we'll go to our revenue chart here and let's um, add in um, maybe like 10 uh, account executives in May. And so this will dramatically increase our revenue from 350 uh, it'll make it uh, substantially higher if we're uh, so now we're up to 1.1 million. So this illustrates a second approach. This is better when you don't have specific employees in mind. Um, it's more for line hires. Now the third approach is what I would call trigger hires. And so here um, we can set certain triggers like revenue-based triggers or time-based triggers or customer-based triggers. So as we look here, all of our account executives are um, driving revenue, but they're also driving customers. And you'll see we're getting up to around 200 and uh, around 300 customers by the end of December of 21. So let's say that um, uh, these uh, um, uh, we, we our customers require a lot of attention, and so we need. Uh, let me switch back in this chart here. Let me switch back to headcount. We need um, uh, for every 10 customers, we want to have one customer success person. So a lot of hand-holding is going in here. So um, uh, now this will automatically hire these customer success people uh, to manage the customers. And so you'll see here we now have um, for every um, 10 um, uh, cu uh, customers we're, hi we're hiring um, a, a customer success person here. Now an important thing is that uh, you want to make sure that you're not double counting in terms of um, uh, in terms of your trigger-based hires and your and your line hires and your named hires, your general hires and your named hires. So let's just isolate our support people here, for example. You'll, so you'll see we're getting up to 29 support people. 
Let's say though that we hired, in our general hires, we hired like 10 over here in February, or we'll, we'll call it 20. So we wanna make sure here that we're not gonna double count these people. And so you'll see here, it levels out at 20, and the trigger hires only start kicking in after we've exceeded that, that threshold of 20 that we've hired over here, which is how it should behave. Those are the three approaches I wanted to discuss, named hires, general hires, and trigger hires. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful. And if you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and, uh, and you can hit subscribe as well if you'd like more financial modeling videos on a regular basis. Thanks.